Welcome everybody, it is Business Monday. This is the Small Biz segment, sponsored by our friends over at Commerce RI. It is Business Monday all afternoon. We got lots going on. With me is Robin Silva. She's the entrepreneur between the hot, are you hot? Children's Boutique? We're hot. Uh, children's hot Boutique. And trendy. Yeah, down in, uh, in Barrington. Uh, is there a better place to have a children's boutique, a better place to have a children's boutique than Barrington, Rhode Island? I don't think so. I think we are in the right spot. We've got the right customer. Um, Lots of kids. Lots of kids. We, t we get people from Massachusetts, Fairhaven, New Bedford, Fall River. We draw from Newport, East Greenwich. We draw from Lincoln, Cumberland. Got to get the so, east side because there's, there's not, yes, there's not no. many children's boutiques anymore on the east side of Providence. There is nothing. The, the closest there? one is Newport yeah. and East Greenwich. And there used to be two or three in Newport, and now it's down to, I think, just one. There were so, several. Yeah. Um, so when did you open? Just a year ago. We just had our first anniversary in April. And how was the first year in compared to how you anticipated it was going to go? Uh, it was a learning experience. Yeah. I learned that I bought too much inventory. <laughs> so that is, um, you know, an, an ongoing issue for me. I need to pull in the reins a little bit. But other than that, um, it's been great. I've been in the industry for 20 years. So, um, you know, it, it's not new. Just owning it for the last year has been new. And um, in the previous 20 years, what's the changes you've seen? I mean, it's pretty dramatic, right? It is dramatic um, with the onset of online shopping. Um, obviously, things have slowed down a little bit. But there are still a lot of people who are willing to do just small business shopping, which is great. We appreciate those people. Um, but obviously, the trends have changed dramatically as well. And well, it seems like there's two worlds. I mean, you're not the first uh, retailer who's been on. And we talk about retail a lot. Um, Saul Kaplan from Business Innovation Factory is on with me on most Mondays, and we talk about the transformation of, of, of the retail industry. But it does seem like either you're a boutique, you have high value, you have a premium product, you're adding service, or you're online. And there's almost no in between. Right, right. Uh, we, um, I don't want to say we don't compare to the big box stores, but we, we really don't if you want to compare apples to apples. Right. Um, so people will come to us because they want something unique. They want something that's different on their child rather than something you know, that every other child is wearing. Um, and we do offer a service. We get a lot of customers who don't know what size to buy for a child, um, you know, whether they're 10 years old or 10 months old. They don't know what to get. So we do help them in that area. And we have free gift wrapping. We'll ship your product for you. Um, so we really are service oriented. We realize that's what brings people back. And um, is it, are you selling to the mom shopping for uh, her child or the dad shopping for, but uh, I assume it's pr primarily a female shopper. We get some dads too. Yeah. We get dads and grandpas. Uh, what's the percentage of female shoppers versus male shoppers? Oh, there's. 90 10? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I wasn't that no, you gendered off. But they are out there. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, and what's the percentage that they're shopping for themselves or they're shopping for the gift? the grandmother's coming in to buy the new grandchild something, mm -hmm. or Christmas, or birthdays, or whatever? Uh, for moms, I would say they are coming in more um, to buy gifts for nieces, nephews, yeah. friends. Um, not so much their own child, only because um, you know they're on a budget. Yeah. They do shop sales and whatnot, and they definitely, we, I try to have all different price ranges. Um, but it's the grandmother who really comes in and spends you know, quite a bit of money on their grandkids. Um, and how have you seen uh, the change just since opening? Are you seeing good trends, building name recognition? Um, and what are some of, some of the challenges to that? Um, I have seen a change, and it is for the positive. And again, Small Business Saturday helps us out a lot. Um, utilizing social media, we have a Facebook page, we have an email list. Um, so those changes have brought in more people. I've done local advertising in the Bay and Rhode Island Monthly and in our local newspapers. Um, and you know, I'll sometimes ask a new face what has brought them in today, and sure. they'll say, "Oh, I saw you know your ad in the Bay or 
you know, word of mouth, a friend or whatever. So I know that um, as in so much as our location has always been a children's store, right. the brand Piccolo is getting out there. And then who is in that space before you? Is it that? was my employer, Teddy Bearskins. Yeah, right. And they had a couple locations around. They do, around. and they are still down in South County, yes. And they closed Barrington, and they they'd been there for kind of ever, 35 right? 35 years they 35 had been there. And I was their manager for 18. So once they decided not to renew their lease, I thought it was time. Yeah, good for you. Yeah. Um, a little different being the manager versus the uh, yes. entrepreneur. Yes. yes, now I work seven days a week. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to respond to every question, not just some of them. I do, I do. <laughs> it's me. Good for you. Um, Talk about the challenges of building the business plan, going out and getting financing for it. How long did it take you? Was there urgency because they were moving out of the space and you didn't want it to turn over to something else? Talk about that experience. It, start, it was a long process, um, and I had never written a business plan before, so that was my first step, and that was um, definitely a, a learning process. and just something that stumped me. Um, but I did get some help from, you know, that organization CIC. that helps people. CIC, and there's another company of Business retired people. Oh, yeah, yeah, retired um, executives. Yes, that helped yeah. you. And my mentor was um, just a tremendous help. We met a couple of times a week um, at Dunkin' Donuts for coffee and went through <laughs> the whole thing. I hope you bought. <laughs> no, he did. He was very nice. Um, but it started in September of 2016 right. when the owners had said, you know, listen, I don't think we're going to renew our lease in March. So it did take a long time. Um, and when I finally went to the bank, I was turned down by a major bank because of all the new um, qualification requirements and things like that. Went to a smaller bank and was again turned down. And um, I was fortunate enough to work with a banker who referred me to CIC and Buck Harris and um, thought that would be the way to go with this money that the governor had allocated. And luckily he did do that. He didn't have to do that, but I'm thankful that he did because I wouldn't have been able to realize my dream. That's great. Um, and it is, you know, it's, uh, it is a dream as an entrepreneur because, you know, the buck stops with you, but you also get to set the vision. What are you planning on in the future? Well, uh, they say you don't make any money for your first five years, so yeah. we have only have one year under our belt. But if things go well, um, you know, we may open another location in, within Rhode Island. That's great. How many employees? Right now, just three of us. That's great. And uh, hours, we're we, just, we, we were just actually, we were just talking today about hours and how hours for a lot of places are like they were in 1952 to some degree, but people live a different life. They, so, they do. We, um, we are 10 to 530, which is what most of our local businesses in the area do. Um, we're open 10 to 5 on Saturdays and Sundays on 12 to 5. Oh, great. So You're open Sunday, so that's a big win. In the summer, January, yeah. um, July and August, not so much unless someone needs me to be there. And I always tell customers if they can't get in by 530, you know, just give me a call. And if I don't have anything going on, I'll stay late for you. So. How was the process? Um, you mentioned that um, before we came on, it was a little, maybe didn't move with the speed of light. What's, what, what are some things you could suggest to other entrepreneurs watching who are thinking about breaking away on their own, opening up the, you know, that shop of their dream, that retail location or the restaurant or whatever it is? What are some things that they should plan on doing that they maybe hadn't thought about in, prep, in preparation of building a, a business? You need to have the time. Um, I was getting, it was taking a long time in my process that my goods were starting to come in before I even had the funds. Um, so you need to plan accordingly, certainly, and you need to have things like life insurance um, so that they have something to fall back on should you fail, you know, God forbid. Um, but di different things like that that I didn't think I would need. And uh, biggest reward so far, what's been the most excitement that, aha, thank God I did this, this is the best? It 
just seeing my family be so proud of me has, um, especially my parents, they're 97 and 92. Oh, well, that's cute. Um, so yeah. for them to stop in at the store and, you know, just be so proud is, is something that I'll always cherish. But just to see the kids come in, you know, I've been in the industry, as I said, for 20 years, and to see the kids start out, you know, as a little toddler, and now they're coming in for their eighth grade graduation dress, and, you know, they still remember who you are, and you know, just watching the growth of the business and the smiles on people's faces, it's very rewarding. Now, our news director, Kate Nagel, worked at Jamil's Shoe. Yes. And she says that if she was able to survive Jamil's Shoe, she can do absolutely anything. Uh, are you as uh, rigid a uh, taskmaster as uh, Jamil's shoe was back in the day? Back in the day, I, I bought my children's shoes at <laughs> Jamil, so I know how hectic that can be. We do have those kinds of days, certainly, around the holiday. And, you know, you have five or six kids running around playing, and um, it can be chaotic at times. You know, you're tripping over car seats and carriages. Um, but I don't know if I could master Jamil's with <laughs> picking a ticket to get weighted on. That's right. Back to school, yes. 4,000 people in one weekend. <laughs> uh, listen, I really want to thank you, Robin, for coming in. Thank and you. And congratulations on the success. Thank you. Uh, we want to hear about the next step when you go profitable. We want you back when you announce the second, third, 20th location. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> and, you know, there's a lot of opportunity out there. I mean, you see a, a huge retailer that sold a lot of clothes like Toys R Us mm -hmm. and there's a huge gap there there's a lot of people looking around for solutions and I do I agree with you hundred percent I think service is the play if you're gonna be brick-and-mortar uh, you have the huge opportunity to be that place for the difficult gift the cool gift the special right. gift right. Uh, that special dress or outfit for the holidays uh, I think you're smart and you couldn't pick a better location right. Uh, right. so congratulations to Thank you, you. Uh, we'll be right back in just a minute uh, with our next guest.